Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at kinematics of SHM. So let's get started. So what we mean by the kinematics of SHM is really just some properties of the object that is undergoing simple harmonic motion, such as its displacement, velocity and acceleration. And in this video we're going to look at the displacement of an object undergoing SHM. So it starts here by saying another example of simple harmonic motion is a tuning fork. Consider a tuning fork vibrating with a frequency f and a displacement y. So when you strike a tuning fork, the two prongs on the tuning fork are going to vibrate back and forth. And that's what produces the sound you hear when you strike the fork. It then says the displacement of a prong tip can be described by the following expressions dependent on the initial conditions. And now this doesn't just apply to a prong tip, it applies to any object undergoing simple harmonic motion. So what we mean by initial conditions is basically what's happening right at the start of the object's motion before it's actually started moving. So when time equals zero. So you see we have initial conditions here and here where time equals zero. So we say that if the displacement y equals zero at time t equals zero, i.e. if the object starts from its equilibrium position or rest position, then the displacement can be described by this expression here y equals a sine omega t. And alternatively, if the object starts at its maximum displacement away from the equilibrium position or rest position, i.e. at the amplitude a of the oscillation, and if that occurs at time t equals zero, then we use this expression instead, y equals a cos omega t. So we use sine if the object starts at its equilibrium position at time t equals zero, and we use cosine if the object starts at its maximum displacement from the equilibrium position at time t equals zero. So what do these symbols mean? Well, we say that y is the displacement of the spring, or in this case, the prong of the tuning fork. But in general, we could just say the displacement of the object that is undergoing SHM, and this is measured in meters. A is the amplitude of the oscillation, measured in meters. Omega is the angular frequency measured in radians per second, and t is time measured in seconds. Now an important point to note is that when calculating problems involving the sine and cosine of omega t, i.e. when using these displacement expressions, then you need to make sure that your calculator is in radians mode. And so if you don't, your calculator will be in degrees mode, and then you'll therefore get the wrong answer if you're trying to find either the angular frequency omega or the time t. Now it's useful to remember from the rotational motion topic that angular velocity, or angular frequency in this case, is given by omega equals 2 pi f, and since f is equal to 1 over the period, f equals 1 over t, we have omega equals 2 pi over t as well. So we've got two expressions for angular frequency, one in terms of linear frequency f, and one in terms of the period of the motion t. And here's what the symbols mean. So we said that omega is the angular frequency measured in radians per second, f is the frequency of the oscillations measured in hertz, and capital T is the period of the oscillations measured in seconds. Because remember, that's just a time. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.